Let's get hyped. Welcome into the Husker 24-7 Hypecast. I'm Mike Shaver, joined by Michael Brunts, Brian Christofferson, and today's special guest, the first time we have had an executive director of a college football award on the Hypecast. We've had this guest before, but now he has a fancy new title. Michael Sevier, <laughs> welcome back to the program. You, you're you're part of the college football movers and shakers now. I don't they, know about uh, that. This is a gateway for us to to potentially, you know, have on other uh, other movers and shakers of the college football world. I don't know if I'm shaking or moving or anything like that. I'm just trying to to do my best and survive. I don't I don't often say executive director. Most times I just say I'm with the Jet Award. Because it sounds too pretentious. It's like buying an Acura or something like that. I, I, I'm not. I'm not that big of a deal, you know. Yeah. Well, we'll just refer to you as Executive Director Michael Severe for the entirety of the program. That, that sounds. That sounds outstanding. <laughs> Whatever you say. He's a. He's a big deal. I was on a golf scramble with Severe, and he was uh, taking calls uh, like like a hot shot for like twelve of the eighteen holes. So oh, wow. Uh, there was a yeah. board meeting going on that I had to be part of while we were doing the scramble. That's that's what it was. I wasn't taking I was on a board Hot meeting. Shot. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Just talking to to the other, you know, key members of the board while you're standing over a four foot putt that your team needs here. No, I stayed in the cart and Brian <laughs> took my shot. And b- because of that we won many no. prizes. <laughs> oh wow. I don't know wow. if that's true though. He did get a chance to see my uh, my now thirty year old driver that I built myself. That <laughs> used to be the biggest head on the market, and now it's like a three wood. Yeah, he hits it well too. For a guy who never played uh, severe, severe, he would be pretty good if he if you played consistently. But anyway, that's that has nothing to do with that's Nebraska nothing to do with the hype. Okay, all right. Well, we will we will <laughs> dive into this Nebraska Purdue contest, and we will as we do every single time on the hype cast. We're starting. On the offensive side of the ball, and we'll start with Michael Severe. Michael, what uh, what have you sort of seen from Heinrich Harburg these last couple of weeks? Now he's he's well into conference play. Uh, you had a, a program in Northwestern had the extra week, the bye week, to be able to kind of prepare things for him. What did you see from Northwestern and how they attempted to attack Heinrich Harburg? And what do you maybe expect from from Ryan Walters given his defensive acumen? Yeah, I, I wouldn't come after him. I wouldn't allow him be able to break out of the pocket and get some scrambles. I would rush three, let everybody sit back, make him make decisions. Um, he's not an accurate passer. It, it's it's really a mix. When you're talking about Satterfield or when you're talking about Harburg, I feel bad because when you have that many offensive guys missing, when you have nine of the, the 11 or eight of the 11 starters you had no longer playing, it's hard to judge how good a quarterback can be. I can tell you this. He misses a lot of reads. He misses a lot of open guys. He's got a real problem when standing in the pocket and being able to get a ball down. Anytime that you throw a sidearm, the key to baseball or football, you guys know this, you have to be able to get low in order to be able to come over the top, right? He can't get low because he comes sideways. So he can't make certain throws. He can't make a hole throw between a cornerback and a safety. He just can't do it. He can't throw the ball over linebackers into a pocket to be able to hit a crosser. He can't do it. So because of that, he's limited in the things they can call for him. And he's limited because he doesn't have the talent he had around him in the run game to be able to make up for it. So if I'm Purdue or any team going forward, I rush three, I keep him in the pocket. Maybe I get a guy to break through at some point, maybe a late corner or safety coming. But for the most part, I make him throw in the coverage and make him make good decisions. And I think if they do that, Nebraska is going to really struggle if they can't run the ball. If you can run the ball, obviously, against a light box, then they're going to have to come down. But if they can't run the ball against a light box, he'll struggle throwing the ball. Well, to be able to run the ball and even to be able to protect uh, Heinrich Harburg, they now have to rely on def- def- uh, well, can't talk today. Different <laughs> offensive linemen. There we go. Very difficult phrase. Different offensive linemen. Nailed it there. All right, Brian. They're going to be better, by the way. They're going to be better. They're, this offensive line will be better than it was. Okay. Well, we got a prediction there from Severe right They'll off the bat. Better. Brian, yeah. do you, I guess, do you agree with Michael Severe? I don't know. Um, I'm open to the idea. Uh, I'm excited about Evans Jenkins. They've liked him since he got here. Um, versatile guy. He was actually getting reps at left guard uh, during the bye week. I mean, he was kind of doing that all the time, I think. But Rule mentioned that Piper had a sprained ankle before the um, Northwestern game. And so Evans Jenkins was working at left guard. So that was sort of a, a break for them that uh, he'd been prepping there. You know, he got 39 snaps and was pretty good um, in the last game out there. Uh, Latovsky had played 280 snaps a year ago. So we're not talking about, you know, guys who have not been in, in the middle of things. Prohaska, of course, has started games. 
Uh, the big question with Teddy is uh, a rule said he's all the way healthy, but is that going to show itself? Because against Michigan, uh, he did he did struggle a bit out there um, at that left tackle spot or the reps he got. I think he played about 20 snaps, but he maybe wasn't fully healthy then. So I don't know. I'm, I have an open mind about it. They can't afford to lose another guy on the O-line. But when you look at the front five, they're going to trot out uh, this week. It's guys who you could talk yourself into like, OK, they've been around. Let's just see how this looks. It's not necessarily going to be better or worse or maybe it'll be the same. But uh, at least uh, it, I don't think it's uh, it's an emergency situation as much as it maybe felt initially when we heard the news Monday. Michael Bruns, Nebraska, in addition to losing several offensive linemen, also lost wide receiver Billy Kemp. Uh, against Northwestern. He was going to be a big part of the game plan per Matt Rule. He'll be back later this season, or at least that's the expectation. But for now, Nebraska does not have him. How big of a blow is that uh, for a wide receiver room that's already down? Isaiah Garcia, Castaneda, Marcus Washington, Xavier Betts left the team. And what what does this sort of do as, as you try to figure out how to game plan and, and what you want to build offensively in the passing game? Yeah, I mean, you, you took – one of your few established players out of that that bin of options when you're kind of formulating what you want to do offensively. I mean, they, they weren't shy about saying that they were really going to incorporate Kemp last week against Northwestern. The, the thing that I think hurts them somewhat is the replacement for him, Jaden Doss, was kind of the, the freshman wide receiver that was trailing the farthest behind the pack. I mean, he had missed time with the broken arm. They were trying to get him up to speed. Uh, obviously, when Kemp left the game, um, you know, quite a bit of what they wanted to do with the slot wide receiver just wasn't there. And so we'll see if he's, you know, gotten a little bit more up to speed this week. But, I mean, the you know, Kemp was kind of your your reliable punt returner. Um, you know, you could do some things in the in the jet sweep game with him. Uh, we'll see if Doss can kind of step in and, and do a little bit of that that workload that they they had for Kemp. But it, it's tough. I mean, I I can't imagine me Marcus Satterfield and just looking at who's available for you when you start trying to formulate a game plan week to week. Like it, it's, I understand fans saying you you call the offense for who you got, but it's it's getting to the point now where it's like, okay, the, these weren't guys that we were you know wanting to count on in a major way this year, and now those guys are going to be playing 40, 50, 60 snaps for you. So that's that's just a tough spot to be. And, uh, you know, Kemp was kind of the last of that group that you felt like you could really count on and, and be like a fifth, you know, 10 to 15 touch guy per game. But you see one guy that is available and, and one guy that made you look really <laughs> good on Saturday, Malachi Coleman, on his touchdown uh, off of the option pass. First, take your victory lap. Second, is this sort of the fair expectation of, of what? to hope for with Malachi Coleman, like maybe the the kind of the one big breaker a game? Uh, or do you think that there's different ways that he can affect things on offense as well? Um, I think there's different ways he can impact it. You got to get him the ball, though, when he's open, too. I mean, he, he's been in space on some routes where there were opportunities for more catches than have been. And I, I don't want to, you know, it, it's tough right now. You got a quarterback trying to figure it out with wide receivers at the same time. It's going to look disjointed. But that had to be um, a confidence boost for him, you know, to just run by somebody. And, you know, we could say, yeah, the play was there. Or a lot of guys could have made it. I don't know. He's got speed. He burned him. That, that's what he's supposed to do. I think there's another player or two in him. Um, for the rest of this season where he could do something like that, where it's like a 45, 50 yard touchdown. So um, maybe that pops up again, but I, I have to, I have to think um, he's floating pretty high, you know, to get that out of the way and have that experience and know that you impacted a game that way. And as for the play call, um, I'd love to see him continually not, you, you can only go to that well so much, but drop, drop that option pass and some of that stuff in, you know, once a game, right? You you can get teams on that. I mean, Nebraska made a living back in the day where you just you just sucker them, and it's it's such a gotcha play. And I knew, um, not I'm not very smart, but I knew the first time they ran that, if the pass was there, it would be it would be wide open because it always is. And so it, it it worked, and hopefully they can get it to work another time or two this year. 
Is that your victory lap too? I mean, I, I figured you'd be a little bit more forceful on it, letting us have it. I didn't. Th- I thought it was kind of obvious they would eventually do it um, because of Rule had talked about how they had he had been speaking with Tom Osborne about the option game, and and you know that had to come up like, okay, this is going to be there. You're setting it up for this. It always you know, this was always effective for them back in the day. Why wouldn't you try it? Um, it's just such a great play. Like it it it. That play in the fullback trap back in the day when Nebraska, you know, it was the ultimate, like, uh, you just pulled somebody's pants down situation. So, um, like, it, it's it's a great play, and I I, I love when uh, it, it gets incorporated. Now people are going to be wanting it like they used to want the diamond formation during the Tim Beck era. Remember that? People would want it more than two or three times. So that's with a category we might enter now. Brian, right. Brian, you missed you missed the prediction by five yards. You had everything else nailed. You need to you need to thump your chest a little bit more than you're currently doing. Like this is well, I don't know. Talking about deep pantsing Northwestern is is pretty high for for BC there in terms of gloating. I think. Okay. Well. Yeah. That, that's all. I ever, if I ever at the end of like that, I'm probably taking my pants off. So that's yeah. just that's what things are. <laughs> Chris Bassnet would approve. Yeah, I would. Uh, right. you, you guys saw how proud I was in the press box about it. That's all that matters. You saw, you saw it in the moment, the reaction, the glow. So there we go. <laughs> Executive director, Michael Severe, you mentioned the running game earlier. What, what were your initial thoughts on uh, the extended playing time for, for Emmett Johnson? He got the start on Saturday. What did you see from him? What do you think of this rushing attack as Nebraska tries to get through these next five games? I've never been a, a huge fan of Anthony Grant. I know that he's, He's your option. He's your guy you normally use. And this doesn't even have anything to do with turnovers. I, I just don't like the fact that at times he runs with his eyes closed. Uh, that's the only thing I can figure because there's so many times where there's holes that are open and he runs opposite of the holes. He reminds me of the guy when you're at practice and the the, the, the running backs coach or the head coach, the offensive coordinator is going, run it where I told you to run it. That's what he does. He doesn't do that. And because of that, I've never been a big fan of his, um, especially in games against Power five teams. He gets most of his bones done when he is going against non-power five teams. Anyway, I, I like him at Johnson. I love his quickness. I love the fact that he gets skinny in the hole. I love his explosion. The first time they let us go to practice and you saw him in a kickoff return, you saw how quick he is out of the block. So I like that a lot. Um, and, he, and he has a certain amount of confidence, too. You see this swagger in him when he when he gets up after being hit. He just kind of – the way he moves. I just – I'm comfortable with him as a youngster. The one position out of all the positions in football besides kicker that you can come in as a freshman and you can have huge success is running back because it's instinctive. If you have good instincts and you know how to – you have good contact balance, you're going to be pretty good, and he's pretty good at that. I'm, I'm glad he's out there. Um, I hope he gets even more carries. The thing that we need to see more of is the screen game. I don't know why we're not seeing as much. You go back and you watch Baylor play. You go back and watch Temple play. Wide receiver screens to Tyquan Thornton over at in Baylor all the time. Where we, We're not seeing wide receiver tunnel screens. We're not seeing uh, running back screens. I'm a screen guy. Let's see more screens. I think Emmett Johnson would be great with screens. Do you think that they're capable of successfully getting all of the pieces in the right spot to run a screen on this team? I know there are three incredible things you have to get done. You have to have an offensive line that has the patience to be able to let a guy through and move out running back that has to be able to get to where he needs to be in a quarterback to be able to put the ball over, use the offensive line. I think you do make it easy for him. You make it smoke stuff where you don't have to have as much stuff happen. You just got a quick guy spinning out. You got a a wide receiver that's stepping back with another wide receiver being the blocker, make it easier for them. You don't have to technically do an NFL type screen. You can do something quick where it's out of the hand of the quarterback. It's in the hand of a playmaker and you're making something happen. Michael Brunt, you've been, uh, you've been really pounding the table for Tristan Alvano these last couple of weeks to turn things around. He made another field goal on Saturday. What, what's kind of the confidence level that you have in, in Alvano at this point? Where do you think the team is sort of at? Yeah, no, I think he, I, I mean, that, that kick was good for him what another 15 yards probably into the wind. I mean, mm-hmm. th- that was, th- that to me was the kick of a kid that just kind of let it go. Like he, he just, it's like when you pure a drive, you, you stop thinking too much. And, you know, I, I think the Illinois game was big for him. Confidence wise. Uh, we talked to him this week about just a very slight modification that he's made in, in his approach. That's made a big difference. Um, and you know, since then he just seems like in interviews, he's even carrying himself a little bit more confidently. Um, you know, I think 
with with you know the the type of games that Nebraska is going to be playing over the next five. I mean, he's going to be a really big piece of you know Nebraska being able to to pull out some of these really close games. So uh, I think the team has confidence in him. I don't think that's ever wavered, but you know I, I think he kind of needed to see some um, see, see see the ball go through the the uprights a couple times. I mean, it, it's more of a, a confidence thing with him and. I know he's been really, um, you know, leaning hard on Chris Brown, Drew Brown, and some of those guys that have been through it uh, before with, with some of the connections at Westside and things like that. And that's been helpful to him too. So I, I, I think, you know, he's he's starting to round into the kicker that everybody kind of knew he was. And I, I think that kick was a big one, uh, especially given the circumstances against Northwestern. I mean, that, that was just a – it was mashed. It was like a it was like a, a BC drive just crushed right down the middle. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I didn't snicker there. That was just, I was exhaling. Some, mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what that was. All right, let's move over to the defensive side of the ball. Executive director, Michael Severe, do you, let me, let me restart that. How would you, who would you select as the top three players on Nebraska's defense right now? Wow. You know, the one we we're talking about this on big red wrap up uh, the other night with Damon and they're so interchangeable, right? So whether you're talking about Reimer or you're talking about Gifford or you're talking about even Bullock, right? They're, I know their numbers are different, but there are times where they make plays and I don't know which one it is. Like I have to, I have to focus for a second and go, who made that tackle? Because they're so similar. The key player, to, obviously, in the 3-3-5 has got to be in the middle. So it's Ty Robinson and Hutmaker. They're, they're the number one and two guys always because without them, the system doesn't work. It just doesn't. you got to be able to take up four guys if you can with two as often as you can, and they get that done. So I would go those two guys are your first two. And then can I have the other three guys as one big guy? Can I have Reimer and Bullock and um, and uh, the other one, the safety? Uh, Gifford. Gifford, thank you. As one person. Uh, if I could have them there, then I would be one, two, and then those guys are the third guy. But they're just so interchangeable. And, and when Reimer wasn't on the field and you didn't, when he wasn't out there, it makes the difference on the defense. But when I see Gifford be able to beat two blocks to be able to make a play on a screen or to get through and be able to make a play when there's nobody else there, I, I, it's hard to say any of those guys are less valuable than the other in terms of those three for me. BC, it's been a couple of weeks now since Nebraska took on Michigan. Obviously, they were unable to slow down the Wolverine attack. And there might be a lot of context to that, but we'll ignore that for now for the purposes <laughs> of this show. Uh, what? How do you feel like this defense has responded um, after sort of their, their really only letdown of the year in, in terms of, you know, how they played against Michigan? Now, you could say Colorado, but they were put in tough spots repeatedly in that game. But how, how do you feel like this group has really sort of responded and what is it sort of set up for the rest of the, the next five games? I think they've really embraced rules challenge to them that basically you're the lion of this team, you know, like you accept that uh, we're playing around you. If the score is seven to six Nebraska at halftime, go into the third quarter expecting you're going to win that game seven, six, if you have to, because that's, that's the type of unit you are. If the other team gets the ball on the 15 yard line off the turnover, you're going to shut them down. And I think because they've had success the last couple of weeks, obviously confidence has built up. Um, Nash Hutmaker has just been a problem too for, I mean, all these big 10 all lines. And so I, I think that's opened up so many things with the pass rush. I think they're sitting at 24 sacks now for the year, which is the combination of what was it? They get eight against Colorado and then eight, you know, this last week. So that obviously is where the most of that comes from, but still the numbers are the numbers. That's, that's way better than they've tracked in the past. So th there's just a lot of things that are sort of going um, arrow up right now. Jamari Butler is arrow up right now. I mean, against Illinois, that was the first game where it was like, he was sort of that, that vision of that guy. We've always kind of hoped as when he was a raw recruit and it was going to take some time. And now you're starting to see it with him. Um, so I, I think the next step though, is you gotta, you gotta be a defense that, uh, with it, we talk about this all the time, takes it away and you make that play where you actually get a pick six, like Tommy Hill could have had on the third play of the game Saturday, you know, stuff like that where they got to take that next level to probably have those three to four extra points than Purdue or an Iowa when, as you go to the finish line here. Brunt, I, I don't know if you've noticed this, but we have not fielded as many questions slash complaints about Nebraska's pass rush this uh this fall can you walk us through why things have worked well 
as Nebraska has been getting after the passing? Well, I mean, I think they've done a good job of scheming things up. I mean, you look at what just a very small wrinkle that they had against Northwestern. They basically said, we're going to create one-on-one battles up front and we're going to trust our guys to, to go and win. And they did. And, you know, I, I think the other thing, to, it, it, at least from my vantage point, it's more of a, an attitude thing too. I mean, it, it's, and it's not just the pass rush. It's the way that guys rally to the ball. I mean, that there's just, you know, it's not just one guy taking a stab at a quarterback and trying to get him to the ground. You've got, you know, one guy taking a stab at a quarterback and then there's two other guys right around him uh, to finish up the play. I mean, I, I think that they've kind of adopted this relentless attitude and you're starting to see that in the pass rush. So, you know, and, and the other thing too, I mean, they've, they've got good young players on defense. I mean, Princewell is a good pass rusher. Jamari Butler is becoming a very good pass rusher. Um, you know, James Williams, that that's what he does. I mean, he, he's in there to rush the passer. Uh, I'll see, we'll see if he, you know, does more of that this year, kind of how they use him. But I think they've done a good job of not only, you know, accumulating these guys that can get after the quarterback, but, you know, Terrence Knighton's done a really nice job too of, of teaching technique of really emphasizing that with guys who aren't even in his room. So it's a combination of a lot of things. And I, I think you also have a defensive coordinator that's not afraid to really, really dial things up and, and, you know, let his players be athletic and make plays. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different here. Instead of working back through with three more questions that I totally have written out right in front of me. Instead, we're going to do this. I am going to ask you to each give me a name for Nebraska's next random defensive player that has a nice week. We've seen it with Makai Bayer. We've seen it with James Williams. We've seen someone emerge randomly, not every week, but most weeks this season. And so now you are on the spot. You can pick someone that's already emerged. You can pick someone that you think is just going to have a good week, but that would also be sort of a pick to click. I encourage you to try to get random, and uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if anybody can get close here. It looks like Brunts is still thinking. We're going to start with BC. Okay, really random. Um, and Elijah Judy is due for a, a, a game where he makes a play. Um, you know, that's a just a really notable sack or TFL. So that I'll go there. Uh, All right. We got yeah. Elijah Judy. Brunts. Yeah, I'll 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 give you two. I um, you could be potentially stealing one from yeah. Severe by doing that. I'm going to say that Riley Van Poppel has a breakout. Um, He's been out there. He's played well in very small spurts, but I think we see more of him as the season goes along. Um, One guy that we're, that has already emerged who is emerging even more that we have not talked about is Prince. Will. Uh, he had seven tack. Damn it. Sorry, severe. You can go. That's all right. No, go ahead. That's my guy all year. That's fine. No, he is. And he hasn't had Prince. Will human yelling has yet, not yet had his big game. Right. I predicted it'd be game six going in. I thought it would take him a while to get going. I didn't know he get banged up, but I think he's going to have his big game. He's going to get at least two sacks, I think, uh, on this weekend. And and they're a team that because of the way Hudson Card moves around the pocket, he a lot of times runs into sacks. I think Prince Wells is going to get a couple of those. He had, um, he had the most the most quiet seven tackle two quarterback hurry game that I can remember in a while. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm going to follow the pattern from earlier this year. Timon Lynham had a tremendous uh, special teams play. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, I think that's going to earn him some extra reps. And in those, he will come up with a big pass breakup for Nebraska Mm -hmm. on Saturday against Purdue. So I'm going to go line him on that one. All right, we're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, oddly specific predictions, picks to click, score predictions. I think we're going to see some predictions for both teams in this uh, upcoming segment. But we'll see what what the esteemed panel does. You're listening to the Husker 24-7 Hypecast. Okay. Oddly specific prediction. Severe, you said you had yours. We're going to go ahead oh, yeah. and start with you so so Brunt doesn't bully you and steal yet another thing that you wanted to say. So last week, my, uh, because Northwestern was the, had the least amount of touchbacks in the Big Ten, I thought Nebraska would get a long return. If you consider 36 yards or whatever that they had with Tommy Hill, a long return, I'll take credit for that. This week, though, the thing that Purdue does not do well is they give up lots of big plays. Lots of big plays. Second most in the Big Ten in terms of giving up plays. 104 big plays. They're second in the in, in the conference as well in terms of giving up long rushing plays. Nebraska is number one in the Big Ten in long rushing plays. I think they're going to have at a minimum 
12 long rushing plays. And my specific odd one is I think the guy I don't like a whole lot, Anthony Grant's going to have at least a 40 yard run. Uh, I'm going to go 44 yard run in terms of those long rushing plays. So 10 to 12 long rushing plays and Anthony Grant having one that's going to go about 44 yards. All right, Brent. Uh, I, I'm expecting Heinrich Harburg to have a big day. Um, I think he's going to, I think he's going to score two touchdowns. Um, I, I think the first one's going to be, you know, he's not going to pitch it. We know he's not going to pitch it. He ain't going to pitch it. <laughs> he's just going to, he, he's, but he's going to give a little fake. He'll, he'll give a little fake. So they at least got to think about it, but I'm going to say Heinrich Harburg got a 63 yard touchdown run. And then he's going to punch one in from 12 yards. He's going to he's going to bully a safety on the way into the end zone. So 12 yards, 63 yards for my two Heinrich Harburg uh, touchdown runs. All right, I have a uh, a oddly specific prediction for Nebraska's first touchdown. It is going to come on a triple option play in mm. which Heinrich Harburg pauses as Emmett Johnson, you know, looks like he's going to take the ball straight up the middle. And off of the uh, emotion, Jalen Lloyd is going to trail behind Harburg, and they are going to run an option using Jalen Lloyd in which Heinrich Harburg actually pitches the ball. Mm. And Jalen Lloyd runs it in for the first touchdown of the game on Saturday. Jalen Lloyd rushing touchdown off of a uh, – you would call it an option. I don't know what the exact term of it would be. A 37 but, uh, toss, something like that. Okay. Well, we'll go with that. The That is a very football guy. I – I, I seven, don't know if that's even seven accurate, guy. But number one, yeah, two, three, four, five, six, off. seventh guy. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> See, I like it. I like it. All right, BC. What do you got? Um, Purdue is going to miss a forty-three yard kick into the north end zone uh, that would win the game at the end. It's going to go wide <laughs> right. <laughs> that's amazing. How does he do that? I don't know. BC just gave us his entire answer, and his face never moved once. <laughs> <He's so laughs> no, this is incredible. That's awesome. He looks He's a like ventriloquist. A <laughs> All right. Well, um, we're going to keep rolling and hopefully BC is still with us. Uh, we, we <laughs> I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, you see? Yeah. You're, you're, you're there. We can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's man. all that matters. People are going to have to watch the video to see this. this is it's a little, <laughs> it's a little, awesome. it's a little act that little act I've been working on. Yeah. You, you, I mean, you perfected it, kid. You're doing really well. This is nuts. All right. Uh, picks to click. We'll get to Brian right away. <laughs> okay. Uh, Nebraska 17 to 16 um, plays really good red zone defense. And as I said, a missed field goal in the last uh, 20 seconds. All right. Well, that, right that was your game. game prediction. That was your prediction. We were looking for your pick to click. Well, I'll take my game prediction and my pick to click at the same time. Um, Luke Reimer. It's a Reimer kind of day. He's going to be all over the field um, creating chaos. Uh, Reimer's my pick to click. Okay. And just to be clear, 17, 16, Nebraska. That is correct. Good red zone defense and a missed field goal at the end. And Nate Borkercher is going to score a touchdown as well from 18 yards out to make up for the one he should have had on the first play of the game last week. Mm. All right. And so that was three for nine field goal wise. They're three for nine. They're the worst field goal converting team in the Big Ten. There we go. So here's our stat man for this. Uh, Just do your pick to click and your game prediction. We'll just roll it all together as one here. Me? Severe, yeah. All right. 24 20 is my pick. I got to make sure I remember what I put on Big Red Wrap-Up or people will make fun of me if I change it. So 24-20, Nebraska winning the game. Um, my pick to click is Prince Well, Human Yellen. I was planning on coming to that with that, even though Brunts was you know, trying to appropriate it for me, which you know, you guys do that all the time, appropriate stuff. But I, I look at it and I say that I think that the way, they, the way that Purdue runs their offense, and they're talented, they have more offensive skill players, I think, than any other team that Nebraska is going to play the rest of the season. And really only two other teams that have as many running backs and wide receivers and a quarterback that can spend it as Purdue, but they make so many mistakes. They fumble the ball so much. I think they're going to turn the ball over quite a bit to Nebraska. Nebraska won't turn the ball over, but I think Prince will have a huge day. I think Nebraska is going to come out of there with a win. And uh, that's mine. All right, Brunts, pick the click on your prediction. Yeah, I think uh, it sounds like it's going to be kind of a mess of a day weather-wise on Saturday. Uh, I, 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 believe in a Heinrich Harbor bounce back. Um, I think he's going to be important with his feet. I think he's going to make a couple throws, um, not a ton of throws, but a few. And uh, he, he gets it done uh, from the quarterback spot with a clean, relatively clean day as much as you can uh, maybe hope for on a day like Saturday. Uh, I think Nebraska in a narrow win, I think 
uh, let's say 22, 19, uh, Nebraska. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I, I think, I think the, the, this very, very slow march towards, um, well, either Detroit or the, uh, the pinstripe bowl continues. Yep. All right. I have, uh, Jalen Lloyd is my pick to click. And I think the severe kind of hit on it. Purdue gives up a lot of big plays. I think he could have a couple big plays for Nebraska in sort of a unique way on Saturday. And at least one of those goes for a touchdown. And then I am going to go with the, uh, 23 to 16 win for Nebraska Mm -hmm. against Purdue. So we all took Nebraska. I didn't know if anybody was going to go Purdue. I thought about potentially, but I just, I feel like this team with its defense is going to be able to, uh, to hang in there. The defense will set up the offense for one score on Saturday and I have the, uh, the Huskers as well. So it's a, it's a clean sweep and I am happy to report BC remains in the same condition that he's been (laughs) in for the last. I'm still here. Seven. That's amazing. <laughs> it's not supposed to work that way. We've never seen anything like this. this how's is- a screen? How's a screenshot look? Is it a? Is it an embarrassing screenshot? Or no. yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, you you look stunned. You're staring. <laughs> you're staring a hole through my head right now. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not like. It, I'm not like itching my nose though, where it could be confused. No, it could be else. a lot worse. No. This just looks like you're intensely focused on uh, something. We're not sure. But <laughs> looks like we got eliminated on around the horn. That's what it looks like. <laughs> it oh. does, yes. <laughs> we do need to grayscale that out there a little yeah. bit. You know, no doubt. Be, no doubt. That'd be good. Uh, all right, Michael, uh, appreciate it as well. Anything you would like to add before you depart here? Today? Uh, one thing I want to say is that the worst net punting team in the Big Ten is Purdue. And Nebraska is not known for returning punts anymore. But I talked to this week, Dewan Gross, because he's going to be our Legends Award winner this year. And I believe because I talked to Dewan Gross and because the net punting is so bad for Purdue, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a, a long punt return. Who's like going to return punts with Billy Kemp out? I don't care. I don't really care. I mean, if it was me, I, Emmett Johnson would do it, I think, because of, of his quickness and speed. But, of course, he's playing running back now. Or, you know who was really good the one time we were at practice? Ethan Nation. That's a quick kid. I wouldn't mind seeing him back there catching a couple of punts, as long as he's catching it in that weather. But I think whoever it is, because they're so bad net punting-wise, is going to get a return. It's interesting you said Ethan Nation because Ed Foley, that was one of the names he said of a, a guy from just watching on film. He could tell he could be a pretty dangerous punt returner if he's put in that situation. So uh, you you could have hit that. With, that it could be, be Ethan Nation. That would be awesome. I and then he could have been uh, he could have been anyone sort of uh, random Husker of the week on defense too. That so is it, true. It could well, all he, come. Yeah. It could all come full circle. Brunch. He he. I was okay. surprised real quick though. I was surprised that he didn't. They didn't target him. When he came in the game, he's so small. I was surprised last week at Northwestern, and twice he got beat too, but they went the opposite way. So on film, I'm sure that's going to be out there if he's in the game. All right. Brunts, anything you'd like to add? No, I'm good. I like to uh, publicly apologize to Michael for taking uh, Prince Will. That's my, <laughs> my bad. Um, but my yeah. Bad. All right, BC is. Uh, you can hear his voice if you're. I'm here. here. Yeah, I'm here. I appreciate you guys yeah, yeah. not saying anything about me, like I'm not in the room because I am in the room. <laughs> well, sure. I don't know if you're ever going to leave this room based on that. <laughs> I'm stuck here forever. <laughs> so, all right, we'll see if we can get BC back next week for the uh, the Husker 24/7 podcast. Be sure to check out all the coverage we have leading up to this Nebraska Purdue game. On Saturday, you can find it at Husker247.com. There'll be recruits on campus. There'll be plenty of stuff. Matt Rule speaks on Thursday as well. Perhaps uh, we'll find out who could be involved in the punt returning duties. Uh, we we find that out on Thursday as well. So uh, all of that stuff could be found at Husker247 throughout the week. And we, of course, will have a Sunday side session on Sunday as we recap Nebraska-Purdue for Michael Severe for Ryan Christopherson and for Michael Brooks. I am Mike Schaefer. We're Husker 24-7.